There have been a lot of previews about Assassin's Creed Origins over the past few days as the game nears launch, but what I've noticed is that for some reason, none of them really talk much about loot boxes and microtransactions and how they work. Some outlets have even shared false information, like this video from Game Informer, claiming that you can't exchange the game's purchasable Helix credits for the in-game drachma currency. You, you buy, uh, so the, the way you buy these chests uh, is just through your regular gold, which you cannot, you cannot buy the gold uh, that you used to buy those chests. Okay. Um, this is simply not true, as you'll see in a minute. I don't know if it's an NDA or embargo thing, but it's a bit disconcerting that they aren't talking about this, as I think a lot of people want to know exactly how this shit works and how much impact it might have on gameplay before they make a purchase. Well, looking around for a bit, I finally found some footage courtesy of YouTuber UbiCentral showing what the game's e-store looks like and what you can purchase with Helix credits. First things first, let's take a look at the price of the Helix credits. $5 will get you 500 credits. $10 will get you 1,050 credits. $20 will get you 2,400 credits. $35 will get you 4,600 credits. And finally, $50 will get you 7,400 credits. So, what can you buy with Helix credits, you ask? Well, let's begin by looking at the Add-ons tab of the store, which features an assortment of additional game content like the Season Pass and content that you get by purchasing the game's Gold Edition. Now, now there are no prices listed here since they're already installed, but it looks like if you get the standard version of the game, you can buy these separately using real money or Helix credits. At the very least, we do know that outside of the game, Assassin's Creed Origin Season Pass will be sold for $40. Moving on, let's check out the Packs tab, where you can buy things like the Legendary Bows Pack and the Legendary Melee Pack for 550 Helix credits each. As you can see in the items descriptions, they grant you three legendaries of the chosen weapon type. Now, look at how scummy this shit is. They priced each item just outside the range of the $5, 500 Helix credits pack so that you have to purchase the $10 pack to afford one. If you want to get both, well, the combined cost of 1,100 Helix credits just happens to be slightly above the 1,050 Helix credits that the $10 pack nets you. So you have to purchase the $20 2,400 Helix credit pack to afford both. See how strategically those manipulative Ubisoft fuckers price this shit? Moving on, let's take a look at the gear tab, where you can buy outfits, mounts, weapons, shields, etc. All weapons and shields seem to cost 250 Helix credits, or $2.50, while the mounts and outfits seem to cost 500 Helix credits, or $5. It doesn't take a genius to realize that all of these items are woefully overpriced in a complete ripoff, but the good news is that according to the game director, Ashraf Ismail, everything that's in the store you can get from playing the game. But it's still kind of shitty in that for those who want to accelerate their gameplay experience or whatever, instead of being able to type a cheat code like we used to be able to back in the day, they have to pay these exorbitant prices. Now, I do want to point out that despite Ismail's promise, there do seem to be a couple things that are exclusive to micro-purchases. For example, website Codex has discovered that you can purchase legacy outfits like Altair's outfit and Ezio's outfit, but they're marked by the Ubisoft Club icon, potentially indicating that they're exclusive to Uplay. Other items like Aguilar's outfit from the Assassin's Creed movie can only be obtained by becoming a Twitch Prime member. Is any of this stuff a deal breaker? No. Is it still shitty? Yes, especially after Ismail told us that all e-store items would be unlockable in-game. Moving on, the last tab worth checking out is the one labeled Time Savers. The first thing you'll immediately see is that contrary to Game Informer's claim, Drachmas can in fact be purchased with Helix credits. It's right here, clear as day. For 200 Helix credits, you can buy a small pack that will net you 2,000 Drachma. For 1,000 Helix credits, you can buy a medium pack that will net you 11,000 Drachma. And for 2,000 Helix, you can buy a large pack 
that will net you 24,000 drachma. You can then use that drachma to buy and upgrade equipment, as well as invest in, you guessed it, loot boxes or hacker chests, as they're known in Assassin's Creed Origins. The description states contains one random weapon or shield, opens automatically on purchase. They were first spotted in gameplay footage released back on October 5th, and a few days later, Eurogamer followed up by asking Ismail in an interview about their functionality. The article said, quote, These chests are only purchasable with in-game currency, and are there for people who like to play the game naturally and pat out their wallets. And here's the thing, they weren't technically lying. It is true that you can only spend drachma to purchase hecka chests, but in allowing players to exchange purchasable Helix credits for in-game drachma currency, the game is still enabling people to spend real money to gamble for randomized rewards. Sure, it's less blatant, less direct, it's a two-step process now, but the game does still provide the avenue to do that. As for the pricing model, well, we know that one hecka chest costs 3,000 drachma. $5 will net you 500 helix credits, which is enough to buy two small drachma packs for a total of 4,000 drachma, which will leave you with a leftover of 100 helix credits. So for $5, you can buy one loot box with a leftover of 1,000 drachma and 100 helix. $10 will net you 1,050 Helix credits, which is enough to buy one medium pack for a total of 11,000 drachma, with a leftover of 50 Helix credits. So for $10, you can buy three loot boxes with a leftover of 2,000 drachma and 50 Helix. $20 will net you 2,400 Helix credits, which is enough to buy one large pack and two small packs for a total of 28,000 drachma with no leftover Helix credits. So for $20, you can buy nine loot boxes with a leftover of 1,000 drachma. $35 will net you 4,600 Helix credits, which is enough to buy two large packs and three small packs for a total of 54,000 drachma with no leftover Helix credits. So for $35, you can buy 18 loot boxes with no leftovers of anything. Finally, $50 will net you 7,400 Helix credits, which is enough to buy three large packs, one medium pack, and two small packs for a total of 87,000 drachma with no leftover Helix credits. So for $50, you can buy 29 loot boxes with no leftovers. Now the good news is that from what I've generally seen and heard, you really don't need to rely on these hecka chests to comfortably play the game, as it already offers a steady stream of drachma, outfits, armor, weapons, and mounts when players explore the world, complete quests, so on and so forth. But it's also important to not mince words here. The game does technically allow players to pay for loot boxes or gamble for random rewards. Regardless of how unobtrusive or optional they may seem, it's important to acknowledge that paid loot boxes are still there in some form so that those with addictive tendencies can be wary. Finally, let's take a look at the rest of the time saver items, which include overpriced material and resource packs ranging from 200 to 1000 helix credits, ability point packs that cost 300 helix credits for three ability points, and maps that reveal the location of hidden places and collectibles such as star alignments, tombs, and hermits. It's worth noting that these types of maps existed in the game world in past the Assassin's Creed games, whereas now they can only be purchased with Helix credits. Once again, from what I've seen and heard, none of these are necessary to play the game comfortably, but it doesn't make it any less shitty, as stuff like this used to be free cheat codes that players could choose to use without financial considerations. Hell, I could boot up Skyrim on PC right now, bring up the console, and type TMM1 and reveal all of the game's map markers without having to spend a single cent. So overall, yes, on the one hand, it is a relief that microtransactions and loot boxes seemingly won't have a huge impact on gameplay and can be easily ignored. But on the other hand, it is important that we don't forget that something was still lost with the implementation of these features. Cheat codes, once inherent to video games, have been stripped and converted into a monetization scheme. And one has to wonder what other inherent features will be stripped from games in the future to be sold separately. Destiny 2 already gave us a glimpse of this trend. They took unlockable shaders from the first game and tweaked them to be one-time use consumables before mixing them into the pool of randomized 
customized rewards that you can get from the game's loot boxes. It's important to understand that all of these shady schemes and practices start out small. They are a little seed waiting to sprout, grow, and evolve into something abhorrent. Case in point, Destiny 1 started out with relatively unintrusive microtransactions, and they became ever slightly more intrusive in Destiny 2, and you can bet that they will take that to the next step in Destiny 3. Then there are cases like NBA 2K18's microtransactions-dependent progression system, and more recently, Star Wars Battlefront 2's pay-to-win loot boxes. Both cases are a combination of years of publishers slowly poking and prodding their way to reach that point. We kept giving these fuckers an inch each time, and as years passed, before we knew it, they had moved a full mile. There was this gradual shift from games having no microtransactions, to games having a little microtransactions in multiplayer, to games having a lot of microtransactions in multiplayer, to games implementing microtransactions in single player, and now the latest evolution of microtransactions is paid loot boxes or in-game gambling. This gradual shift can even be seen throughout the Assassin's Creed series. It started out innocently enough with Assassin's Creed 3 when microtransactions only played a small part in the game's multiplayer mode. But with each new entry, microtransactions grew larger, they became more sophisticated, more ingrained in the game's DNA, slowly creeped their way into single player, and now with Origins, the Assassin's Creed series features paid loot boxes for the first time in the series history. It took them years, they took their time, they crawled inch by inch so that we wouldn't notice the drastic change, but they have come this far and now one has to wonder how the next Assassin's Creed will further evolve microtransactions. And this is why I call this shit out, even if it's minor, unintrusive, optional, or whatever you want to call it. That's the purpose of condemning the feature regardless of its seemingly harmless implementation and the game's overall quality. No, I don't think that the inclusion of microtransactions and loot boxes immediately makes Assassin's Creed Origins a bad game. But it's not about the immediate short-term effects. It's about the potential long-term ramifications that microtransactions may have if they continue to evolve at the pace that they have. It's about warning you about a small, seemingly harmless tumor that's festering into something that will have tangible, adverse, irreversible effects on future entries in the Assassin's Creed series and the entire gaming industry. It's about killing the microtransactions egg before it hatches. It's about killing Resident Evil 2's William Birkin before he goes from this to this. Is this what you want video games to look like in the near future? No? Me neither. With that, I would like to end this rundown of Assassin's Creed Origins microtransactions and loot boxes. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this video useful, and if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. All contributions will go towards helping us remain 100% independent. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.